Hello everyone, in this video, I'd like to discuss how can we implement a customized PID in PLC or in any other computer system. Here, the customized PID means instead of using the PID function block provided from the brand, for example, Siemens, Allen, Brownlee, Backoff, or Omro, we can program by ourselves for this PID equation. So we can manipulate the PID parameters inside. We can based on the traditional form like this style, we can convert the traditional form of the PID equation into any other forms according to our application requirements. Or we can involve a little bit advanced control into the traditional PID control equation. Okay, in the industrial world, the common used PID function block we can see, for example, this is the Siemens TIA portal PID compact, and this is the Allen Bradley Studio 5000 PID proportional integral derivative, and this is the back off control PID function block. And the common things from those function block we can see, they all have the set point, process feedback, process value, and the output. We can see here, set point, PV input, and output. And same as here, set point, actual value, PV input, and output. And if we recall, this is the one typical control closed loop diagram. And this is the controller. For example, we are using PLC or any other controller to control one object system. Uh, in this system, we have actuator. Actuator typically shows like a first order system. And the controlled object, like this case, this is the chemical heat process. This process shows like a second order system, and typically this is a second order undamped system. And then to measure this chemical heat process, chemical temperature, we will use temperature sensor. And this temperature sensor also shows like a first order, the first order behavior. And then while using this temperature sensor and this temperature result as a feedback and compare with the side point. Therefore, one typical closed loop PID control loop, we can see it has the side point and the process value PV and the control output here. Sometimes we call this MV manipulate value. And the side point minus PV, usually we use the E, E equal to SP minus PV. So we call this negative feedback loop, okay? And while we're using the function block from the each brand, we will connect the side point variable to the side point here, side point, and this side point here, and connect the process value, the temperature, pressure, or water level to the input process value, actual value here. And then the control command, usually this value from zero to 100, and you can connect to the valve control. Typically the valve can be controlled by four to 20 mini N scaled it into 4 to 20 mini N using the analog output. So this is one typical PID input and output. Okay, two inputs and one output. As we can see here, different brands of the controller, they have the different style of the PID, but actually inside this PID, their algorithm almost the same. Keep in mind this word, almost the same. Different brands, like those different function block, they could use the slightly different form of this PID equation. So what is traditional or conversional PID equation? Let's recall this traditional PID equation from the ice transform. Before the computer system, to implement the PID control, the very traditional way is using the circuit like this style. This comes from the control book. So actually using the amplifier and capacitor and the resistor, this entire circuit board runs as the PID control. For example, this. At the end, this is one typical equation of one PID controller ice domain transfer function. And if we slightly convert this equation into another style, for example, if we call this area as a K, okay? And uh, we derive this S here. So this GC is equal to a K. It actually includes three portions. So the first portion S plus this derive 4.45.95 plus 22.55 over S. 
okay if i exchange those positions so put this as the first one this is second one this is third one so we rewrite this a little bit k is outside and the first portion is one consistent plus and second portion s is at denominator and third portion s is at the denominator portion so as a typical PID transfer function this first portion we call this proportional and this is a integral and this is a derivative that's why we call this transfer function as a PID I is an integral D is derivative P is a proportional game the proportional means how much powerful you can control the object and the integral we can understand as the experience you gained and the derivative that means you can predict a little bit and then if we convert this into another typical style the proportional game we call this kp plus a ki over s the kd multiply s so this is the typical pid s domain transfer function then if we go back to this control closed loop so what the input of this transfer function and what the output of this transfer function here while we are using this s domain transfer function the actual input of this transfer function it is here so as i introduced set point is sp pv is feedback right so the e e is equal to sp minus pv keep in mind must be sp minus pv okay so e is the actual input of this equation okay this is e and the result output is a mv mv is output here whatever this style this pid function block style the core of the pid equation running inside of those function block the pid function block is running this equation the e is equal to side point minus pv okay then people will ask why in this topic we are going to discuss the customized pid let me explain one story basically came from the 10 years ago 10 years ago i had one project that project need to control 200 pid closed loop that actually is one hatch system that system has more than 200 egg hatch nests and in each nest it has a heater and a temperature sensor so we were going to use one plc controller to control more than 200 pid closed loop if i'm going to use the pid function block from the plc software if the software allows me to create 200 closed loop as we know running as a function block every time when we call this function block we need to create the instant db and sometimes the software or the controller the hardware resources it has some limitation doesn't allow you to create amount of pid instant db because the controller or software doesn't have enough resources to deal with this but as we know typically to control the temperature especially if the sp is a solid we just need to regulate the temperature to achieve this set point to control the temperature within a very narrow range this is typically an easy task for the pid control or the pi control however if we are going to use the pid function block to do this task for each closed loop this pid function block is a little bit overkill especially for this high amount of control closed loop in my case it is more than 200 temperature closed loop then to achieve this pid task easy job can we program some customized pid closed loop like this as this case the pid actually this is the one important equation that means from the plc wise to run 200 closed loop there are actually just the 200 equations there instead of using this big function block here we just run 200 equations there then that become very easy job for the plc or any other computer system so this is the motivation in this topic how can we program a customized pid and moving forward if you are doing some research task you maybe develop some customized pid or involve some advanced pid control 
into a traditional, into a conversional PID equation. Then you can customize this PID equation for your application purpose. Then once you understand how to program this, you can customize this. You can add on any other advanced feature into this traditional equation. All right, then how can we program this equation into the PLC? Then let's go back to this traditional way. It actually includes three portions, P, I, D, three portions. Its input is an error here, SP minus PV, and output ultimately we will convert it, scale it as a zero to 100. Then we only need to focus on how we can implement this three portion, especially the integral and the derivative. The KP is a one constant value. It's easy to figure out. So let's think about this. If Y is our output, this is MV. Y is equal to the input is E. Okay, this is the input. Input come from, again, come from here, SP minus PV. So this input will multiply this KP plus KI over S plus the KD times S. Then we separated this entire equation into three portion. Okay, so the first portion is just the KP. KP is constant value. For example, you give a 2.5, you regulate this parameter into 2.5, okay? This is the KP value. It's just one constant value, okay? Then the second portion is E multiply the KI is KI over S. KI means one parameter to control integral gain. So what does mean of one over S? If you recall from the previous video, from the previous video I introduced, if we have one S domain transfer function like this, KI over S, ultimately we convert this S domain equation into the difference equation like this. So this is the core difference equation to implement the S domain integral function. Then if we are going to convert this S domain into the K domain, so the KI times TS, TS is sample time and the input E K minus one. Okay, this is the equation to implement the integral function from the previous videos. This is the second portion. Then let's go to the third portion. The third portion is equal to E times KD times S. So what does mean of this S here? The S means derivative. So if we are going to use the computer to implement this S, if this is the first sample and if this is the second sample, so actually the derivative is going to calculate the two values and the time, right? The time between this, this is the T. And what does it mean of this T? T actually this is the sample time. So this equal to Y dk equal to time is at the denominator, sample time, right? The denominator is KD is KD plays the role like a ratio. And this is the EK minus EK minus what? The current error minus the error from the previous sample. So this is the difference equation to implement the derivative. Then if we sum of them together, this will convert to the PID equation based on the difference equation. Okay, this is the typical a conversional PID difference equation style. As we can see, for each items here, it's actually very easy if we are going to use the PLC to implement them. Inside of the function block, they are doing the similar way like this. Okay, so inside, it is calculating three portion and ultimately the result will be scaled from zero to 100. Typically in the industrial world, or especially for the process automation, this output will be used to control the valve or the VFD. And the typical output will be converted, will be scaled as 4 to 20 million to control the actuator. So this is the key idea of the PID by using the difference equation. And if your PID has any other transform, then you can modify this traditional equation. Maybe sometimes you especially focus on the integral or focus on the derivative. For example, from the Siemens TI portal, 
PID compact that function block. They have a slightly transform for this derivative area. This is the help description from Siemens TI portal. It named PID compact. Inside that function block, we can see this is the PID equation. They convert the traditional as only the derivative into this portion. It add one low pass filter here. Because sometimes if your derivative parameter shows too aggressive, then your actuator will show very crazy, especially the PV has a noise. This low pass filter will smooth the derivative portion. So again, based on the traditional PID equation, PID three portions, you can modify a little bit and add on some new features into this original style. All right, so well, based on this concept, I will use the structure test and I will use the Siemens platform to program this equation. And I will separate this PID into three portion, proportional, integral, and derivative. All right, let's shift to the programming platform. Again, if you are using any other computer system, Arduino, CodeSys, Backoff, or any other embedded system, you can still use the same idea to program this equation because they are all computer system. All right, let's do that. Let's shift to the programming platform. And in this case, I will use Siemens TI Portal version 17, and I will use 1200 PLC as an example. And I will show a very common programming method. So you can use the same idea to implement into any other computer platform or any other PLC platform. All right, I will program everything under this group, under this folder. And I will create, and I will create one function. Actually, if we are going to program the PID, it would be very nice using the function block. However, as I introduced, I'm trying to introduce a method that can be used for any other platform. So a common case, I will use the FC. Very easy to understand. We could call that customize PID. Okay. And uh, I will create this number, number 10. And I will use structure test ICL in Siemens. And then I will create one DB data block. This data block is a place for us to create the variables. Okay. In different platform, you could use the different way. Okay. So here I will create a data block PID and uh, I will change the name to 11. Okay. Drag this data block here. And then inside this data block, I will create all the variables can be used for this program. And all those variables serve for this one closed loop, this one PID closed loop. Okay. If you have a multiple PID closed loop, then you can create multiple DBs or you can create all the variables under one data type, under one structure, and then you can call the different structures. Each structure represents one closed loop. Again, I will use very common, very traditional way. For the new learner, it's very easy to understand. Okay, we will define all the variables we will use. So the first very important group, set point, process value feedback, and the PID output, and they all float real. And then I will create a tool, another variables that named divitation arrow. So the divitation arrow will be equal to set point minus process value. This is the E when I introduced the equation. And also because we have the EK and the EK minus one from our derived equation. So I will also create this K minus one. This K minus one will store the value serve for the next loop. Okay. And then very important, that's the TS, sample time. Okay. For the sample time, we better turn on the retain. And we also can set one non-zero initial value. And then we will set a very important PID parameters, gain, integral, and the derivative. Okay. So the KP, KI, KD, take care here. I'm using the KI here for the integral. Actually, in most of PID equations, we are using the TI. TI is at the denominator. So here, KI is equal to one over TI. The common way is using TI, but TI is at 
the denominator. I will write here. So ki is equal to one over ti. Okay. More common way, we'll use the ti. But to show the same role of the gain, how they play for the different portion for the gain integral and the derivative, I'd like to use the same name, the similar name here. Okay, especially for the new learner. So I will leave the KP one initial value 1.0. And also important, those three parameters, we better retain that. And then this three value, if you recall from here, this three equations result. So these three variables will be used for store these three results. Okay. And in addition, we also need the K minus one. So similar like this derivation arrow. So we will create another variables named I value K minus one for this variable. Okay. Real integral value K minus one. Okay. And then ultimately, as I introduced, so the result of this PID, we will limit all those sum result into zero to 100. And the zero to 100, this is the common range of the PID output. Some cases, maybe you need to limit this result from the minus 100 to positive 100. Most of cases, we will range this PID output from zero to 100. So we definitely need to create a two limit. One is zero, one is 100. So I created the maximum output 100 and the minimum output zero. Okay, we will also retain this. All right, so we create all those important variables. In the real system, most of cases, you have to create more variables. You definitely need manual switch to auto, auto switch to manual. And also while the PID is at manual mode, you need the manual output control, right? But in this case, we are mainly focus on the PID, this equation only for switching the auto to manual and the manual control. This is not the main topic in this video. Okay, after we create this, let's start programming. So I will flow this window here. Firstly, we will define the TIs. So in this case, I will firstly define the TIs into 0.2. This means 200 milliseconds. And once we define 0 0.2, ultimately we will call this PID function block or function into a cyclic call. That cyclic call is 200 milliseconds. Keep in mind, this need to match the call cyclic time to call this function or function block. And then we can define this maximum output and the minimum output. This is the 100 and the minimum output, this is zero, okay? So this is the initial value here. And then we can join to the very important portion. So firstly, the derivation arrow. The derivation arrow is equal to the side point minus the PV, okay? E equal to SP minus PV, okay? At the bottom, don't forget, we will record this k minus one. Okay, k minus one will be used for the next loop. Okay, so we'll record here. Then we can go to the three portion. So the first portion, the gain portion, that's equal to the kp multiply the ek. The first portion, the gain value. The gain value equal to the kp, rkp. Okay, this is the gain multiply the deviation arrow, okay? Deviation arrow. Okay, this is the gain. This is the PID, the P portion. Then the I portion, integral portion. The integral portion, this. Integral value. Integral value equal to, if we recall the equation, the integral result from the previous cycle plus the KI times TIS times the deviation error from the previous cycle time. Again, in this equation, I'm using this ratio here for the integral. But most of cases, this ki here actually is at the denominator. So this is actually one over ti. But to show this same role like a pi, kp, ki, kd, so I'm using the ki, okay? So firstly, I will need this integral 
from the previous cycle time. Then we will need the ki, the gain, the integral gain, multiply, multiply the ti's. And then multiply, multiply the deviation error from the previous sample. So this previous sample is here. So we'll copy and paste here. Okay. All right. This is the integral value from the previous sample time. Okay. And uh, this is the portion to accumulate to do the integral function. Okay. This is the i. Then let's do the d. Okay, then let's recall the D equation is equal to the deviation from the current cycle minus the deviation from the previous cycle time and then over this TIs. Okay, this result, this derivative here equal to equal to the KD over TIs. Here the TIs is at the denominator. That's why here we need to initialize this value to make sure it's not equal to zero. Okay. And then they will multiply this deviation error minus this deviation error from the previous sample. Arrow k minus one. All right, this is the derivative portion. Okay, then I need to bring up one thing for the integral area. So some cases you will hear a word named anti one knob. That's the reason because this is the integral area. Sometimes this integral will keep accumulating. Then this value will become very huge, even far away from one hundred. Then when we try to adjust the PID result, if we try to limit the result from zero to 100, but this integral area may be a huge value behind, maybe thousands value behind, then this will cause your PID calculation totally saturated. Then we need to do something to limit this integral into a certain range. This is basically called anti one up. A very easy way is we will limit this integral area within this range, the maximum output range. So we can call this anti one dot. Actually, in the zero area, there could be a better way to do this anti one dot. This is a very simple version, okay? Then the easy way is, so if this integral value greater than this maximum, then then this integral value will be equal to this maximum value. We will limit this integral value at this maximum output. Okay. Okay. Then do this and if this is the maximum and do the same thing. Say if some cases, maybe this result is less than zero. Okay. Then we will limit this value equal to the minimum then do the end if okay so after this limit then we can sum this pid three portion together so this final result named output this output is equal to the p portion plus integral plus the derivative okay and then finally we also need to limit this output result within the range from 0 to 100 so we will use the similar result like this so if we will limit this PID output within this maximum and the minimum most common cases the PID output will be limited within the 0 to 100 and then final things for this integral k minus one. Don't forget, we'll do the similar thing equal to this will be prepared for the next cycle. Okay, don't forget 
this two for the k minus one. This three equation is a very core function to calculate the PID three values. Then they come up together, contribute together for this final PID output. Okay, we finish. This is basically very core function for the PID. Again, in the real case, you can modify this equation according to your application, or you can involve some higher end or advanced PID control to modify those three equations. But the basic structure will work like this. All right, to show how this PID work, I will connect this PID output to the process object simulation. If you recall, I created this first order difference equation and this first order difference equation run the row like a temperature system. Basically the input of this first order system is a zero to 10. If we are going to connect the PID output to this temperature system input, then we will ratio the zero to 100 into zero to 10. And then the feedback of this first order system is this output system. Then this output system will be connected to the process value of the PID. This is the process value feedback. And the same point, this is the same point we are going to use the PID to control the temperature. This is these three variables how we can connect. All right, then let's firstly call this PID. Okay, go to the cyclic interrupt. And I will call this first order difference equation here. This is the process. And then I will call the PID we program. I need to double check the cyclic interrupt to make sure the cyclic interrupt is 200, okay? I need to change to 200, okay? Then let's double check. So in the PID, we change the PS into 0 0.2, no problem, okay? Also, we need to double check this first order difference equation. Okay, I also set 0 0.2 here and they are matching with the cyclic interrupt setting. Again, 200 milliseconds here. Okay, then we will program very simple thing to connect the process value and the PID output. And then I can go to the main program. The main program will run like a free run here. So I will create a structure, the ICO network. This model output will be connected to, will be transferred to the PID process value. So I will copy this variable from this first order output. Okay. Here. Okay, this value will be equal to process value of the PID. I will write it here. This is the PV. This is the PV, okay? And then the PID output. PID output will give to as the input of this process object. And the input of this process object, it is here. So this is the input X. And this input X, its range is zero to 10 basically zero to 10 volts. So when we introduce this first order, but our PID output is zero to 100, right? So we will ratio basically derive 10 times. So that means this equal to the PID output. This is zero to 100 here. Then we will over 10.0. So then it will convert to, this is the from, This is from the zero to 100 to zero to 10, okay? All right, we finish this connection. And then once we start up, the only key parameter we will tune is the KP, KI, and the KD. Again, in my case, I'm using KI, but in most of cases, when we tune the integral parameter it actually running as this, one over TI, you are tuning the TI. This come up another topic, 
So you may see a lot of videos in YouTube. So sometimes for the game, maybe they are using the equation Ki. Maybe they are using the Ti. So you need to be very carefully because they are working totally backward. Okay. Then once we download the program, everything can start run. To show this result, I will create a trace. So let's create a trace. And let me drag the side point process value and the PID output. Okay. And I will select this maximum record duration. All right, now let's download the program. Now let's download the program. Okay, let's load the program into the PLC. And now I can monitor. In the meantime, I will download this trace configuration. And let's start up the trace online monitoring. Okay, okay, let's start up this recording. And here I can set a temperature to 60. So we can see this is side point, right line is a side point, and this is uh, the feedback, and this is the control. And temporarily, our game, KP is one, KI and KD is all zero. That means we are only using the gain control, okay? And then we can see, according to the theory, if we use the gain only, so it definitely has the constant error deviation here, okay? Because we don't have the integral. And then once we add on some integral here, we will see this gap will be filled, okay? So here, if I add some little bit, the integral, So as we can see, this gap will be filled. And here it costs a little bit overshoot. That means this integral may be a little bit high. Okay, but not too bad as we can see here. Okay, then if we increase this temperature to 70, okay, again, right line is a side point and the blue line, this is the process feedback and the blue line and the green line this is the reaction of the PID output 0 to 60 so and as we can see here it has the overshoot that means the integral portion is a little bit too strong so we can decrease a little bit for this Ki decrease the integral in fact so we can decrease to 0 0.2 okay the Let's change back to 60. So we will see this overshoot got solved. Okay, once it got a stable, then we can set 70 again. 70. So let's compare this two times. All right we can see this overshoot got a soft, right? Got a decrease because we decrease the integral in facts. So from 0 0.5 to 0 0.2. So this is the PID tuning. To tune the PID, the common way will use the Nicholas method. I used the two videos introduced before. You can review my video. I will paste the link under this video. Then once you feel happy on the gain and the Ki, this overshoot, if you try to either increase the reaction, increase the reaction of our output, then we can involve the derivative. It can predict a little bit. So it can make the PID react faster than before. But again, the faster of the PID reaction, but if your process has a noise, that will cause the actuator react very crazy. So this need a trade off. Okay, then we can add a little bit this KD. So let's add a 0 0.5. Okay, we can set a new set point, 60.
Okay, once it's got this side point, then we can increase to 70 again. And we can see here, it react faster than before, right? So if I pause here, and if we zoom this area, so compare these two times, this, air, this area didn't have the derivative contribution, but this has a derivative. So we can see this process and this PID output react much faster than before because we involve the derivative and the process also react faster, okay? So this is the basic idea of this gain, Ki and Kd, how that works. And this is how they are working inside. If now, if we go to this FC and if we go online, and we can see this three result, and we can clearly see how that works, how they are contribute to the final value. This is the gain, this is the integral, and this is the derivative. And now if I decrease to 60, and we can see this contribute here, and this is the integral, and this is the derivative. This three value come up together, then contribute to this PID output. Okay, PID output now is 12. Okay. If I change this side point to 70 again, so we'll see how this three value contribute. All right, this is the PID programming we derive the equation according to this traditional, this equation. And then we convert this S domain into the difference equation and the P, I, D, three portions. Individually, they are very simple. Then we sum them together and then implement this into a programming platform. And as we can see, the core equation, actually this is the core portion to calculate the PID three area. And finally, we sum them together. From the PLC wise or from any other computer or embedded system, to calculate this is very simple. And the PID, this algorithm is very widely used in the practice, especially in the industrial area. So using this way, using this simple calculation way, basically there's no any limitation to use an embedded or programming platform to implement the PID loops. Maybe you could have a hundreds loops. Using this way, it's still fine. However, just keep in mind one thing. So to use the PID here, outside the PID, like I programmed here, you definitely need the actuators to control the object and also using the sensors to measure the real process value. For example, temperatures, flow, water level, and pressure, right? All those important variables you need the sensors and you need the actuators. So the PID is not only one function, but once you understand this core function, then you can have a better understanding how to build up a qualified closed loop control system. All right, this is the video for today. How can we implement the customized PID algorithm into your computer system, into the PLC or any other embedded system. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.